All right. Well, I realized the problem. We can only broadcast for up to eight minutes. <laughs> oh, that stinks. Yeah. Well, that happens. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, for my viewers, this is American Revolution reenactors, and um, please sub to them. They do a really good job with their stuff, and they they act they. Sorry to sound condescending, Matt, but you guys probably could use the subs <laughs> as well. Yeah. I mean, it's no, no, no that. No, that's true. That's true. I, I, I don't take any offense yeah, to it. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, but it, yeah, they do a really they're high quality content, 18th century stuff. Um, they've been involved in reenacting for just under, I believe, a year. Correct me if I'm wrong. About a year now. But they yeah, really almost two. And yeah, they're they're not like me. They strictly do this. But that enables them to be more accurate and authentic than I ever could be. So, shout out to them. <laughs> also, shout out. To no, you, what? You, you're not. You're not. You're like. Uh, don't be mean. Uh, harsh on yourself. Your channel is good. Well, I'm. I'm just saying. You guys are more knowledgeable about some of this stuff than I am. I, I'm more into the European and more of the battles and things. And you guys are really good about the equipment. Um, oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you guys are really good about that. And, uh, yeah. As for, um, yeah. So, um, I'll just open this with a question. What is your favorite part of reenacting? Um, I'd have to say just the. Uh, well, one is the battles, just reenacting, like, feeling like. Reenacting, like, history, like, being part of it, like feeling what it was like back then, but also just like the experience with the public, like but public comes ask you like there's these kids that like come like dressed up in their hats and they're like so excited to see you and it's just a cool experience. Yeah. It's a really um it's really good for social element. Um and as such that's really fun. And you know it's just it's pretty cool to do this sort of thing. <laughs> it's a lot, of, yeah. a lot of fun playing soldier in a way. Um, but it's also like, holy yeah. God, a, I mean, when I was ordered to desert during the second Trenton reenactment that we did on Saturday, and then I got, and then I took a hit, I'm like, wow, that's what it was like. Yeah. Which is, yeah. The only comparable thing to that is probably one of like if you're like an inner soft mill sim. Yeah, airsoft sims are fun. Yeah. When it comes to down to though, what's your favorite historical period? I mean, my period. I have to say the 18th century. Okay. Close the close. Um, I do love World War One. I. I love uh, the war, uh, 1812 slash Napoleonic War, the same war, but people know by different names. I love that. I just, I mostly like wars with muskets. I don't like the modern, to just, yeah. I don't know. That's I like further away wars than modern wars. Yeah. As for, um, as for the other stuff, there's a, um, for myself, I personally love early. 18th century. I only do late 18th century because it's what's convenient for me. Um, early 18th century. I mean, I would love to do a Swedish Great Northern War reenactment unit. Unfortunately, only the Russians and Swedes do that. So it, I mean, it, it's a it's a fun mm -hmm. hobby, and plus. You have in that element. You have a bit of pike and shot, but you also have like muskets, and you have nice uniforms and everything else. So shout out once again to them, and shout out to my dear friend Matthew Housley, who I suspect is in the is 
um, is watching the video as we speak. I could be wrong, but Matthew, if you are there, put a comment down. And I do encourage all of you to put a comment down and sub if you will. If you so desire, unless, you know, you're already a sub. Then just <clears throat> create another account and sub to me and them. <laughs> but they, yeah, as I said, they do a really good job. And uh, was there anything else you'd like to say um, on your end? Um, subscribe to, uh, I guess, subscribe to your uh You've been here since the beginning of our channel. You've helped us grow. I know that. And uh, you've just been active, and it's just been nice to have you around, I guess. So, yeah. He, need, he needs to start. He should have more than us, by far. He deserves it. I do have about 12,000 views <laughs> on my collective videos. Yeah, you have... You have like eleven thousand more views than us, but well, I mean, you guys know your stuff, and there's no harm in that. A lot of yeah. stuff, like this is fine, and therefore, it's popular. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the so this person commented on uh, my video, yeah. so I'll read the whole comment. I would like to uh, I would like some advice. I have a new Peristyle M one eight six one Springfield. I have never shot. I know many balls need to be the purest, uh, need to be of the purest lead to, and one to one thousandth of an inch under bore size. I indeed slugged the bore soon to determine the exact dimensions of my barrel. Then I would apply the power bullet to cast my the cast mini balls. The barrel on this rifle is a PMG, which stands for Peristar Barrel which would make it, it inherently more accurate than arm sport rifle I own. So here's the question or questions. Do you think the, re the reproduction rifle muskets arm sport or person are accurate and powerful enough to harvest hogs within 100 yard range using the service charge of 60 grains of powder? Thank you for advice and uh, thank you for your, uh, thank you in advance for your opinion. Best regards, J.A. Yeah, Aubrey. Um, I just venture to say that, well, Petersoli is expensive, but they're expensive for a reason, and that is they're very good quality. If it's a Civil War, they're good quality. Kit, um, you could easily pick off a hog at hundred yards. You were saying, but the but the accuracy you're gonna it's not the most. I know they're accurate, but like. You still have to get used to the accuracy because, like, they're gonna give you a kick, and yeah. I mean, they're not the most as most accurate gun, too. Yeah, I mean, that, that I suppose that goes without saying. Yeah. Um. Like, I guess you. I I you, guess I should write about you would be able to take out a hog, or deer, but you're just gonna have to learn how to aim. Like, I guess because it's gonna be different than most guns. You was talking about a Civil War gun, or in 1795? M1, 1861. Okay, that would be yeah, out to about a thousand yards. So I'd say that, I mean, while you... Oh, wait, an M, M1861 Springfield, I never shot. I have a Peristotle M1861. What is this gun? I never... M1, M61. Uh, um, let me check. A modern gun. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a it's a Springfield. The Civil War Springfield. That'll um. Yeah. Pack a bit of a bang, in the shoulder, but yeah, it, it's accurate usually about, about to about a thousand yards. All right. 300 yards. I, I need to type back. And then you can actually hit stuff at 1,000 yards. Sorry. Uh, but you can typically, in the Crimean War, people reported taking casualties from the British Enfield at, from about 1,000 yards. I mean, that could be wrong because it's the Russians, but, you know. 
they reported taking casualties from a thousand yards. It's accurate, probably about three hundred yards. The Civil War is not exactly my thing, but I know the weapons are decent to know. Nice, nice kit card. What? What? Is that on the stream? Nice. No, nice kit card. It's one of my Carmen's. Wh what oh, video? Wait. Uh, demonstration of Minutemen's gear. Oh, it's a nice kit farm. God. That's a bit of an insult. For reference, for people who do not, who are not watching, far essentially just means far be it from authentic. It's a colloquial insult. I'm reading. Oh my gosh! What did he? I say? can't read. I can't read. I'm done. Oh god! Yeah, that's pretty bad. Did I can't believe I read that wrong. I I apologize. No problem. It's all your fault, Finn. What did I do? <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, but he liked the video. That's the thing. He said that video. Okay. Well, that that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that does. Enjoy really the field music, Farb. Farb. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's a little. We're not kind of. But you spell enjoy enjoyed the filed music. Did you meant field? I think he spelled that. Sudbury fifes and drums. Right far, on. not farb. Yeah. Never mind. Not an insult. Sorry. I apologize, sir. I didn't know you didn't insult him. Whatever. It. Yes. Or just. But anyways, for. For my subs, Farb is a colloquial insult in the reenacting hob in the reenacting community. Hard. Hard, 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 hard. Can I? Leopard. Is the definition. All right. <laughs> That's weird. All right. So this guy, he's actually been very kind. So he said, nice kit. And enjoyed the field music. Thanks for the explanation. I'm not done with the show war reenact, but I've done 1820 to 1865. Like to unsubscribe. Uh, see if you see you on the field at the range or around the campfire. Parts. First Minnesota sharpshooters. Civil War. All right. Yeah, I really appreciate that you dressed to part, dressed the part, and have historical backdrop in this video. Oh, that's that's our what? colonial tavern. Um. Oh, uh, Matthew, you didn't miss much. We were just chatting about stuff. So yeah, sorry. He was what my buddy Matthew Housley was in the was in the chat. He was wondering what he missed. We're just talking about reenacting. And what a wonderful hobby it is, and it yeah, it's extremely fun and extremely educational too. Because it's one thing to you know read a book, but it's a whole other story to. I suppose you know, um, because they'll say, "Okay, they said make ready." Well, what the hell does that mean if you don't know anything about 18th century military formations or drill? And then you actually go through it, and it's like, oh. So it's that, oh, that's what it's like. Dude, this guy has 980 subscribers that was commenting on me. Well, that's... Oh, oh. oh dude, his, his, his YouTube channel is really cool. I'll, I'll check it. Yeah, I'll check on it right now. Oh, uh, shout out to Matthew Housley. 
because he's awesome. Um, and he's subscribe. Awesome. How many total views does he have? Two hundred seventy-nine thousand three hundred sixty-one views, and he's been around for one year, or two years. Sorry, two years, almost three years. I'm two and a half years. In this, anyways. He joined February twenty-fourth, twenty seventeen. Well, shout out to um, what's his the channel name again? First Minnesota. Uh, yeah, first Minnesota sharpshooters. The man. Well, I mean, to be fair, he does do a lot of firings and shooting tests, and and yeah, shooting. So that's probably how he has so many views. Um, yeah, everyone likes to see big booms. Yes. <laughs> Couldn't have put it better myself. I he's commented on every single video. Or he's thank you for sharing part. I hope to see you so I hope to see the site in person one day. Like the video. Lieutenant. I'm not a lieutenant. I'm an ensign. He's not yeah, he's not even uh, he's not even an NCO. He's just you know, <sighs> barely, I'm a junior officer. Barely a commission. And I'm still I'm a commissioned officer now. Let's go. I'm the second in command of my regiment. Yeah. Which one? Both. Second mass. Second mass. Oh, you're the you're the adjutant. You're the battalion adjutant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a pity that you guys weren't at um, what do you call it? Putnam Park. Because I went there that day. Where, but where's Putnam Park again? Connecticut. Southern yeah. Connecticut. Yeah, why don't we go there? That's so weird. You you said you had a parade that day. Yeah, I didn't go to the parade. Oh, you didn't go to the parade. Back no, up. I I actually I was got I got sick on that day. Oh. That was probably Daniel that responded back to you or it was me, I don't know. Maybe it, was, I, it wasn't it was, somebody else asked the question. I just thought it was a damn shame. Uh, because it's kind of a cool location. And I picked up a couple of royal cartridges. What do you say, Finn? Can you get me something to drink? All we have is water. No, you don't. You have beer. <laughs> <laughs> just reading something on Brandon's Discord that's hilarious. It's under uh, general nonsense. <laughs> awesome. That's it. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man. Um, let's see. If, oh, he subbed to you, by the way. Minnesota Sharpshooter subbed to you. Yeah. It's amazing. Um... You sub to uh, History Buffs as well. And for reference, shout out to History Buffs, even though if you know anything at all, you probably know him. How much subscribers does History Buffs have? Uh, three quarters of them. Have. Have. Yeah, 751. Three, quarter. three quarters of a million Jeez. subscribers. Which which is hard to believe, given that I subbed him when he had like a quarter of a million. He's gone up pretty fast in the past three years. Boy's clever. The boy's good. And um, yeah, you okay? Yeah. What else is oh uh, Napoleonic Wars? What is your favorite campaign? Um, which which war of the seven or so coalitions is your favorite? Ah, uh, that's hard. Does this guy have a Discord? Uh, Minnesota history. No history, boss. Um. um somehow. 
Uh, no, I don't believe he does. He has an Instagram and a Twitter. He does not appear to have a Discord. He also, you know, he has a Patreon as well. Which is something I think you guys could have. Um, yeah. I'm probably, see, like, oh, God, that was so loud. Oh, my God. Oh, what? Jesus. I just played the fife and drum music from um, Colonial Williamsburg. Oh, God, my volume was so loud. Oh, uh. oh that was. <laughs> uh. See, I don't, see, here's the thing. Most YouTubers use Twitter, right? Yeah. I absolutely despise Twitter. May I ask why? That's why I use Insta. It's just I don't like the concept of it. I just like, I don't like Instagram Twitter. better. Yeah, I just like I just like Instagram better. It's way more simpler. But like Yeah. And we we have followers on that, which I'm actually surprised. We got up to like one hundred followers. Well ask them to subscribe. Yeah, I put out a notice. I'll probably have to put out another one. Yeah. Cause that'll shoot you up. Probably like a, I don't know. Before you know it, you have thirty thousand. <laughs> I have somewhat of a theory about the American Revolution. Government conspiracy theory? No, no, it's not a government conspiracy theory. It's um, how the American Revolution was not like a liberal um, revolution, but more of a, um, shall we say, conservative backlash. Conservative Calvinist backlash, specifically. I don't like p plain peanut butter and sandwich. You don't? No. Oh. I think weird. Well, I think you're weird, so. <laughs> you guys sub to, um, you sub to, what do you call it, um, Matthew Housley? Yeah, we did. Yeah, he, he, like, lives the next town over from me, and he's, yeah, he's pretty cool. Have you met him in uh, real life? Yeah, I've met him, like, several times. I actually met, I, we, last time I spoke to him, actually, was Trenton. He doesn't do this stuff, he does the historical maps, so. Yeah. I mean, which is fine, because he, you know. Sort of taking a gap year right now, or a gap semester. Yeah. So, um, I what was that video theories of the American Revolution even about? It was theories that people uh, have on the American Revolution. Well, yeah, I know, but, like, of what? Just, of... Honestly, I don't remember. Okay. Like, I know, like, some of the theories were, like, people, um... Oh, it was theories about, like, American Revolutionary slash reenacting. Like, people believe that, like, we put stuff in the musket. We were just talking about stuff. And, like, oh, I don't know. It was one of our first videos, so. Myths or stuff? Myths about the about reenactment? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Not necessarily a bad thing to correct bad information. I think we're going to delete that and redo it because, like, now we got some concept of how to do YouTube. Like, our, yeah, our early videos were kind of bad. Our early videos were, like... A little weird, but I mean, you got like yeah. got how many views out of it? So. Then you got hundred views, which I don't even know how. I don't know why. Yeah, well, actually, one of my videos took like a massive. Um, it didn't 
it took like a it took like a massive spike during Christmas. It was um, Silent Night with the Wehrmacht in 1942, and it was already I posted last year. So in about I want to say in a period of about a month, it went from like 250 views to nearly 750 views, and it went from like two likes to 25. Nice. So, I mean, holiday specific stuff does tend to spike the, during the next holiday. That being said, I probably will not be attending Monmouth this year. Unfortunately. I don't know if we are either. Yeah, I'll be at um I'll be with third New Jersey at Springfield. The one of the very few towns that was actually burned by the British during the War of Independence. Lexington wasn't burned, Concord wasn't burned. Uh Springfield and Kellingett Farm. Yeah, you know why Concord and Lexington wasn't burned? Because us second mass people freaking saved America. <laughs> we can tell that, you can tell that to the um to the historical committee in Springfield and Connecticut Farms, and they'll be very upset because they're um it took fourteen years for them to rebuild their town. I know. Yeah, fourteen fucking years from. 1780 to 1794. 1794 95. It was a particularly nasty affair with a lot of loyalists and a lot of. with a lot of loyalists involved with the burning of the town. The green coated um, loyalists from New York mostly and a lot from Jersey too. It's it's crazy when you think about it because the Jersey line in seventeen eighty was something like six hundred strong. You know how many troops Skinner's Greens had? How many? Something like three thousand. And those are Jersey oh loyalists. Tells you something about the popularity of the cause in my state. So clearly not very popular. Not indeed. Okay. Um, I all right. I'm afraid to say this, but I just made a Twitter account. Oh god. Oh god. Oh. God. Yes, Matthew. I expected a little bit more. N not you. I'm, I'm talking to my um to the guy who's on the feed. I'm going to th I'm going to let him join the stream. I think. Let me see if I have the link. Um, let's see. No, I I hate Twitter. I'm deleting my account. I already hate it. I just deleted it. <laughs> All right. All right, well, that puts that out, out of the way. Um, let me just remove this real fast. Um, let me see what I can do with this. Um, I'm going to see if I can invite Matthew on here. Dude, I don't, wait, I don't even think you can read out the letters that uh, are on my muskets that I made in my profile picture. Yeah, you can't. Uh, I spent so much time getting those letters there. <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm going to. All right. Okay. Hold on a second. All right. Let's open Boom. All right. Hopefully, he'll join. All right. And that'll be your first time to, I suppose, speak with Matthew Housley. <sighs> okay, come on, Matthew. Come on, come on, come on. 
Come on, come on, man. Join. Come on. Come on, man. Come join and talk to us. Hello. Oh, none of us join. Oh, hello, Matthew. Yeah. Hello. How are you doing? Very good. All right. Uh, Matthew, meet Matthew. Hey. Hi. How you doing? Hey. Good. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing fine myself. Uh, what is there something wrong with your mic, by the way? Oh, hello? Yeah, hi. Uh, your mic's coming out a little fuzzy. Okay, uh, hold on. No problem. Wait, is it fine now? Yeah, it's, it's okay now. It's okay. Audible. It's more audible than it was. Okay, um, okay. So, collaborative between these three gentlemen. Okay. Between these two gentlemen, myself, and, I mean, <laughs> whatever. Um, as, um, yes, yeah. I expected a little bit more from Jersey. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Well, as Ben Franklin put it, it's a barrel tied at both, barrel plugged in at both ends. Yeah, okay, yes, that, that's true. Um, Jersey has a rather checkered history when it comes to the War of Independence. The last royal governor, Benjamin Franklin's bastard son, was a staunch loyalist. But he was eventually arrested, imprisoned, and then thrown into New York. And the ironic, and of course, of course, the funny thing is we were one of the, the colonies that declared independence from the British before the 4th of July. Yeah. That's yeah. amusing. Same with, we declared it in some teens, uh, once the proclamation declared it then. Yeah. Well, town of Barnstable. Yeah, well, what were the colonies that declared independence before 4th of July? Massachusetts? Jersey and... Uh, um... New Hampshire might have. There's like there's allegations that like there was that one town in North Carolina that did, but I don't hold too much scrutiny. Uh, South Carolina, Virginia, Rhode Island, uh, Delaware, and uh, New Jersey. Yeah, that's those are the ones that declared independence before the Fourth of July. Yeah. Well, plus Maine, but Maine was part of Massachusetts. Yeah. So yeah, that doesn't count. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't count much. Um, and so far as the rest of the War of Independence is concerned, New Jersey was just uh, like um, yeah. We have way too many battlefields to be. Um, well, yeah, well, I'm trying. I'm tr well, I'm trying to think of. <laughs> well, I'm trying to think. Well, because I know what the. I'm trying, like how many battles were fought? I'm trying to name all the battles. Well, let's see. There was no. Well, there might have been something at Fort Lee that wasn't really anything. There's like one volley, and then the, run, the Americans ran. Well, no, that that, that one didn't even happen. He just left. Yeah, there might have been like some skirmishing, but he showed up and he was pissed off. Yeah. So. Im Okay, I'm going to go up to the IQ bus. Okay. Maybe we can talk to Christopher downstairs. Okay. Hold on a second. Uh, I'll be right back in like five seconds. So, yeah. as for the rest of the... Uh, okay, sorry. Sorry about that. I had to close the, close the door for a little bit. Um, um, let's see, Fort Lee, yeah. Uh, Fort Lee, Trent... There was the Geary ambush, you know. Uh, Trent, what? Yeah. Fort Lee, uh, the Ford. Hapskin Creek, Princeton. There was the Forge War, Brown Brook, um, uh, Short Hills. Well, those are part of the Forge War, so. What? Those are yeah, part those, of the Those weren't part of the Forge War, no. No, Brown Brook is, signifies the end of the Forge War. Yeah. Um, and so, so it, let's see, and then we had, um, oh yeah, okay, okay, sorry about that, um, 
Yeah, there was Monmouth. Uh, Crosswicks. Then there was a there was a big there was that massacre. Was it the Baylor massacre? Massacre of Baylor's dragoons. Yeah. Then there was a Kosciuszko. Then there was no. Yeah, Kosciuszko. Was it blast in like southern New Jersey along the near Egg Harbor? I want to say in like seventeen seventy eight. I'm sure about. Well, seventy eight. That would have been um, the seventy eight. That would have been Monmouth Crosswicks. Seventy nine. There was not much action out in Jersey, except a couple of British raids. Yeah, and then of course we had Springfield, Connecticut Farms, Polish Hook. Um, Eighty was a big year for all that. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and yes, and that's how New Jersey got the fitting but totally deserving name of Armpit of America. At the crossroads of the American Revolution. The, the Armpit of America. We we totally deserve that name. Uh, do we? We kind of do, yeah. yeah well. well, what do you think about New New Jersey's finest, like Chris Christie and Woodrow Wilson? The Democrat who became president of not president, the Democratic mm -hmm. president of basically a Republican country at that point. How does a Southern Democrat become governor of Republican New Jersey? Princeton. You've explained that to me many times over. Yeah. And, yeah, I know. and Matt, if you want to t say anything, just cut in. I, I, I know. I am cutting. No, the other Matt. Oh. I'll refer to you as Matthew and I'll refer to him as Matt. Okay. So, yeah, so. as the war sort of dragged on, yeah, New Jersey probably has more battlefield deaths than any other state in the Union during the War of Independence. <clears throat> as a state, not, not as a military entity. <clears throat> Yeah, I you know I have tried trying to now look at like a lot of um, the battle. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, a lot of the uh, you know, I was thinking one interesting about like you know, a lot of the battles of like your jersey. Like the thing that's interesting, like about like the 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 battle. Of, Princeton, it's like the, the, the we think about like the main reason like why like the Americans won. If you think about it, was because Washington shows up and just happens to boost morale. Yeah. yeah. Prior to Washington's arrival, the Americans were losing. Yeah. yeah. Princeton. Princeton. Yeah. Sorry, I, can't, I can't hear you that well before what? <laughs> what was that? His cousin. That was my cousin. Oh. Uh, Sorry. Princeton yeah. was just a mess. <laughs> it's like Mallwood, because Mallwood's on the other side of this road, and then Mercer, was it Mercer? Mercer and Hamilton emerged from the other side, and then Mallwood's, oh, oh shit. <laughs> Might as well turn and give battle. Wait, was Hamilton wait, was Hamilton's artillery company at Princeton, or did he Hamilton's artillery company already or had, did Hamilton got like disbanded by that point in time? I well I mean I, I know Hamilton had I thought you told me he had a battery at. Um... He he had a battery at no he had a bat like he was command because was Alexander Hamilton was command of a New York artillery company he did see action at at Trenton, um, as well as you know at, at you know Harlem Heights and White Plains the previous two battles of the war. But I don't know if by that point in time he had already like become like part of of. Like Washington's inner circle, and like the artillery company became transferred to someplace or somebody else. It was right around that time. But either way, I'm pretty sure it was Mercer who came up, and then Mawood's like, okay, time to turn the flag and just charge him with the bayonets. You think it would be interesting to think, like, what would have happened if, like, like the two armies like passed by each other and never even noticed the other person was there? Because both sides, when they first engaged each other, they both thought. It, a troll. Like, it was a troll. Yeah, the main army was someplace else. What do you like, think? At least, with, 
At least with Gettys, at least with like you know Gettysburg and the Civil War, the two opposing armies knew that each other was like nearby. Like the main armies were like right next to each other nearby. What do you think? As they were. Oh, well, okay. I think his microphone's muted. Yeah, I know. Keep going. But that, that's just, that would be creepy if they had actually passed each other because then a quarter of Cornwallis's army would still be in the field. Which is, yeah, which is, like, I, um, oh my god, and the, <laughs> The thing is, okay, and then because the funny interest like about that battle is, um, oh god, like I have to do some research because, like, I forget one which one has rifles, the other has muskets. Um, I left the string, such a damn shame. What I left the string, so I'm gonna go ahead oh. and cast. Okay, all right, um, all right. Thanks all for watching, and uh, have a good afternoon and a happy new year. Okay. Oh, oh you're back. never mind. <laughs> that was uh, that, that was a prop. With me. Um, I didn't mean to. You just missed. It. We were just. Yeah, we were just talking about the, the the differences in weapons used during the Battle of Princeton. Because remember, Marwood Ma realizes that his guns, because I think like they fired, but they were too out, they were too high up. But then Marwood realizes because he has, I think, muskets, not rifles, and the Americans have, like have muskets. Like Marwood, like they can, the Americans can't bayonet their weapons, but Marwood's army can, and that's why he orders the bayonet charge that stabs Mercer, and ultimately they died of his wounds. Yeah. yeah. That was, yeah, Trenton. Trenton was fun, and the creek battle was also pretty fun. Yeah. You should really do this, Matthew. It's it's a good hobby. I'm, I'm thinking about it, but, you know, I'm also concerned, like, well, I, I'm also concerned a bit about, like, all, like, you know, because, really, you know, I have hearing sensitivities, and I'm wondering at the noise of all that gun. Firelight. Well, you, you can wear earplugs. Yeah, I could. And then you and you can always join as a civilian. No, oh, like I could. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's there's more to it than just the battles. Here, here, I have some advice. Just don't join an artillery regiment, and then your hearing oh. will be good. Yeah. Also, I sometimes wonder, like. I wonder sometimes wonder if my mind can be disciplined enough into a soldier. Oh, well, I have no doubt you will prove equal to the challenge. After all, I have, and I am not exactly the definition of disciplined. <laughs> I mean, that's why people are joining the army, anyways. So. All right. Here. See, I want to see your. I want to see your training of your regiment because we. We have a regimental meeting in February, and um, we're doing a training, and I kind of want to record it and see how organized we are. We have a regimental meeting on Saturday night. <laughs> which is annoying. I could have just record. I could have just recorded the drill. But Nichols' manual is really tough when it comes to street fighting. I'm telling you. You use, you use that manual? We used that manual because we were portraying the Philadelphia uh, for, oh, okay. for, for Trenton. Normally, we use the 1764 manual. For my other regiment, which is the the um, we use seven. We use bear. We use bear parts. We use bear and uh, yeah, some, the six four. Yeah, 
Yeah, we yeah we use von Steuben for um for my regiment of the blues, and then for the grays we use the uh for Nichols manual. I mean, we're pretty much the sixty fourth of the bonds. Yeah. One second, I just need to give this to somebody. Ma Matthew, you should actually join me in acting. Wait, what? Sorry. Sorry, I just moved to another location to... You should join uh, me in acting. Yeah, I I, 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 I kind of do at the same time. I'm, I kind of... But we shall see what my schedule permits. Um, the big thing is, can you financially afford it? Uh, how expensive is That's it to be a reenactor? Re well, if you get it right, well, the first time, you're only spending about two thousand dollars. Well, it's well, I, well, I don't have that kind of musket, breeches, hat, everything. Yeah, yeah, my, well, well, my the thing is, the thing. If if you're like in combat, anyways, you can get loaner gear and ease your way in, so you can sort of recoup your losses that way. Yeah, civilian and and civilians don't really cost that much, so. Well, the thing, well, you yeah. know, because also, you know, my, I don't, um, my, um, my, cause I'm more, cause, you know, I've already, yeah, I don't know, if, like now's a good time because like we aren't exactly in, like I, like a lot of them, two thousand, like my, we are spend, oh, we're spending a lot. As is with like things that I, I I have to do already right now, so adding another financial burden if if reenactment costs that much, it only costs that much, so it doesn't. I mean, they're unit dues. That's that's pretty much it. You got to write the first time. It's cool. well. I have, I have a question. I have a, does your regiment at all wear non lottery coats? We typically wear the short cut light infantry coats, so. Like, you, you don't know, guys always wear a regiment coat. You don't wear, you don't ever go as like militia or anything. Occasionally we we'll wear like militia stuff and we wear like another regiment coat. Because the difference is, wait, we do, you can dress up as militia or you can wear your lottery coat. It's the um, New Jersey, you know, New Jersey is kind of a backup for this sort of thing. Yeah. Mm. When it comes, I mean, it's all up to you. Got plenty. You got plenty of units to choose from if you even want to join at all. And if you learn a trade, you can make some of that money back. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, it's your decision. So I respect that. Yeah. Okay, so reenacting. Uh, uh, I mean, it's also working. It's relatively cheap. I mean, he could even go. He could even run or, or like a messenger and still be like. You could still be part of a military, but not have to spend the money of a gun. Yeah, I could, which may be. Well, yeah, like, which, like, the most I'm going out the box. Right now, I don't have any money for a gun, so I'm trying to get my enzyme commission, or I'm training to become an ensign, and then uh, all that. So it's a lot cheaper to go that way. And then I'll eventually be, uh, then I'll get my gun, and then I will be part time. Yeah, I mean, then of course, and then of course, once I do so, and then I, of course, you know, it's one for one thing to be a reenactor. Now, of course, you have to, you know, master the practice of method acting and really portray the part. Um, well, that's only if you're doing like a lot of art. Stuff. All you need to do is like learn the history for the most part. Yeah, I mean, I haven't. Really? Yeah, I mean, and it's not, you're not doing like dead on accuracy unless you're at like. Unless you're part like, of like. Unless the event. 
Like, you have to have a, like, some battles are just, like, out there just to portray. You don't have to do exact. Uh, some other battles, the organizers, like, the Minutemen National Park, we go by the rules that the National Park gives us because it's a national celebration. So we have to do certain, we have to die in certain places where we're trying to be authentic, but like, it's not always like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then like I, I haven't, for example, like I, I haven't read like, uh, you know, just like example, like you know, uh, you know, the the diary of of Joseph Plum Martin. Um, like I know, like if you want to know, like what life was like for a soldier or like anyone really at that time period, you 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 like you read like the diary of Joseph Plum Martin. I haven't read that yet. I admit that I haven't read it yet. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> well, neither have I, and I've. And I've survived it this far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, the thing is, you kind of just learn. So when you, go, so your first event, you're probably gonna be a little nervous, but there'll be always one or two people and help you. See, the person that did that was uh, Troy in my regiment, and now he's my mentor, and he just got promoted to a recruitment sergeant. So there's always gonna be one person that donates you gear and just helps you out. Like, and they're not going to pick on you. So if you mess up in the drill, it's not like the actual military where you're going to have to do drop 50 and do push-ups and help you out. Should we get back to this next year? Because um, we've been on this about an hour. Um, we could, yeah. Matt? Yeah. yeah we could, like... Uh, um, adieu all, and um, have a wonderful new year. Bye. See you next year. You too. Bye. See you next year. More videos on the way. See you.